Hello again and welcome to How to Master Broderie Purse by Machine. I'm Deborah Wursu from ThreadSketchingInAction.com where I share tips and tutorials on thread sketching, thread painting, artful applique and indeed anything else that I think you'll find interesting. Using Broderie Purse allows you to take a traditional or contemporary angle on an ancient applique technique that is still in use today. Although the technique of Broderie Purse reaches back several centuries, its origins in embroidery and applique go much deeper. People have embellished cloth with stitch for thousands of years, with each generation exploring innovative approaches to their designs. You only need to look around at all the creative textile art being made in the 21st century and you'll realise these methods continue to thrive. Broderie purse, or Persian embroidery, is not actually embroidery, but rather it's applique that emulates designs found on embroidered fabric traded centuries earlier. The popularity of chintz in England and France in the 1700s and 1800s, combined with trade wars due to its popularity, made this fabric prohibitively expensive. So only people of high social status could afford clothing made from this beautiful glazed fabric we know as chintz. Traditionally, broderie purse was worked by hand by either turning the edges and slip stitching or using a tiny hand-worked blanket stitch. But for those of us who don't have either the time, skills or patience to work by hand, there is an easier method and that is to use your machine. The first step is to choose your fabric. I've chosen this cotton chintz for its bold, distinctive images. Although this piece of fabric is not very large, it has sufficient usable images and will tie in nicely with similar designs I've already made. I've also selected this little butterfly from a different piece of chintz. And don't forget to also choose the background fabric, which can be either toning for a traditional look or contrasting for a more contemporary look. On the back of the fabric I've applied some paper-backed fusible web over the areas I want a fussy cut. Apply the fusible web either to the back of the entire piece of fabric or to each small piece individually. The next step is to loosely cut around all the images you think you may need for your design. If you're not sure of your final design, then cut as many as you can to allow plenty of choice. Fussy cut carefully around each of the motifs using a pair of micro tip scissors or small sharp embroidery scissors. Because the background fabric I've chosen is a different colour to the chintz background, I need to remove all these sections between the leaves. To do this, create a small hole by pointing the tip of your scissors into the middle of the section to be removed. Then carefully cut around the edges until the piece comes away cleanly. When all the motifs are cut out and prepared, it's time to begin arranging the design on the background fabric. Experiment with the placement of design by moving around the pieces as many times as necessary until you have a pleasing arrangement. Of course, whatever you decide now is open for you to change your mind up until you fuse the motifs to the background. Now remove the paper backing from the fusible web and carefully put the pieces back in their original positions. You may find it helpful to hold the motives in place with pins to prevent movement. And then, using a warm to hot dry iron, carefully fuse all the design into position. Pin a piece of light to medium weight tear away stabiliser to the back of your work in preparation for stitching. But before you begin, take a few minutes to test your stitch selection, length and width before starting on the actual project. 
The final step is to carefully stitch around the edge of every motif. I've elected to use a very tiny blanket stitch, but you could also use zigzag or perhaps even satin stitch if you prefer. When you've finished, why not carry on and make a whole series of designs that you can display? Ultimately, the reality of this technique is that it differs little from conventional applique, regardless of whether you use needle turn or raw edge approach. Explore the possibilities of using the technique to create an ultra-contemporary design with motifs, or more aligned perhaps to regular applique. The possibilities are endless. If you'd like to learn more about thread sketching and applique, head over to my website threadsketchinginaction.com where you'll find a large selection of tutorials, articles and books to browse, plus links to the approximately 16 or 17 online classes that are open for enrolment today. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to your company again soon. Bye for now.